Today's video is brought to you by the good people over at PatriotPost.us. They are an excellent and reliable source of news information and all that good stuff. A link for them will be in the description box. So when you head over there and subscribe, tell them that ABL sent you. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Michelle Obama complaining about white flight as it relates to what she experienced during her childhood and the general idea of white flight. Now, if you're not quite sure what that is, I'll give you a brief rundown before we get into the video of her talking about it. White flight is when you have a predominantly white neighborhood is usually a good neighborhood. Black folks move in and white folks eventually move out. Maybe the neighborhood becomes all black and then you have problems as it relates to that. There's a whole lot to unpack here as the cool kids would say, but first let's get into the video. In this clip, you'll see her talking about it in context. After we get done with that, I'll talk about what she said. I'll point out her hypocrisy. I'll give you my further analysis and my two cents, and then I'll wrap it on up with a nice bow on top. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. We moved from uh, uh, Martin Luther King Drive to 74th and Euclid because my mom wanted us to have access to then what were better schools. But unbeknownst to us, we grew up in the period, as I write, of called white flight. Yeah. That is families like ours, upstanding families like ours, you know, who were doing everything we were supposed to do and better. Um, as we moved in, uh, white folks moved out because they were afraid of what our families represented. And I always stop there when I talk about this out, out in the world because, you know, I want to remind white folks that y'all were running, running from us, <laughs> you know, because... This family. This family. Yeah. <laughs> this family, <laughs> with all the values that you read about, yeah. you were running from us. And you're still running <laughs> because... We're no different than the immigrant families that are moving in, the families in Pilsen, the, the, the families that are coming from other places to try to do better. But because we can so easily wash over who we really were because of the color of our skin, you know, because of the, the texture of our hair, you know, that's what divides countries. Artificially as well. Artificial things that don't even touch on the values that people bring to life. And so, yeah, I, felt, I feel a sense of injustice. And you know this when you're young. You know people are running from you, you know? And you can see it. You can see it all of a sudden. Because we, we grew up with friends of all races. When we first moved in, Rachel Dempsey and Susan Yacker and I, you know, you had friends of all races. We played together. There were no gang fights. There were no territorial battles. But yet, one by one, they packed their bags and they ran from us. And they left communities in shambles. So when you hear Theaster talking about those, the, the respect that's in community, that history that's there, especially in Chicago, especially on the South Side, we were a part of creating that history, you know. Um, and, and a lot of people walked away from it. They, Disinvested. disinvested. And when we were little, we knew that was happening. You could feel it. You could you feel it. it. Yeah. Okay, so you saw that, you heard that. Now, I don't really know where to begin. Let's start with the elephant in the room, in my humble opinion. Uh, Barack and Michelle Obama, where do you guys live? <laughs> where do you guys live? I just saw on the news the other day that you are purchasing or have purchased a home in Martha's Vineyard for like $15 million. And I'll place a picture of this sprawling estate on the screen before you. This used to belong to the Boston Celtics owner. I'm not sure if that person still owns it or not, but irrelevant. A very rich person owned this property before the Obamas expressed interest. 24 acres, $15 million, thousands of square feet, I'm sure. Is it a black neighborhood? Does anybody black really live anywhere close to this particular estate, I doubt it. Then they have a home in D.C., I think it's what, in a Colorado neighborhood, 8,200 square feet. How much did that cost? Where do all the black folks live in that neighborhood? Yes, D.C. is a pretty uh, high black population city, 
But does anybody black live right there in that particular area? I highly doubt it. Also, their particular properties are very secure, gated off, cameras, all this, that, and the third. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say what some people who are criticizing me right now on the keyboards are saying. Well, ABL, what about security? Former president and first lady. Okay, that's fine. They have a real need for security. But just because they are the former president and former first lady, does that mean that their life is more valuable than mine? Does that mean that they have the right to a safe neighborhood and a secure home and I don't? Does that mean they get to have armed guards with automatics, grenades, drones, the whole nine yards, and I can't even have a handgun in D.C.? That's unfair. That's hypocritical. And that is the whole point that I want to express here. These two individuals are very hypocritical. Why don't you, Barack and Michelle, live in one of these areas that has been, you know, going through some changes? And why don't you, Michelle, talk about black flight that exists as well because quiet as it's kept the whole thing of flight of a particular group of people or race or whatever is not even so much about race it's more about class and we're talking about homeowners we're talking about property value and things like that i'm gonna give you an example from my own childhood just like michelle gave from hers i participated in black flight when i was like in high school, I say uh, like freshman year in high school, right when it first started. My mother and myself moved from our like 99% black neighborhood to about a 50% black neighborhood. Why? Because at one point in our kind of low income, you know, apartment type neighborhood, two bedroom apartment, you know, the drill, you know, uh, income restricted, that type of thing. At one point, it was a decent neighborhood. You know, somebody might get murdered every now and again. It wasn't a bad neighborhood. You understand what I'm saying? But when they tore down some projects, and if you live in Virginia, you live in Portsmouth, Norfolk, you were around in the late 90s. You know what I'm talking about? They tore down these projects called Out of Barbara and Portsmouth. We lived in Portsmouth as well in Churchland, like Churchland North. Churchland West, pardon me. When they tore down Out of Barbara, they gave the residents of that project vouchers to live in different parts of the region a lot of times in ports once i'm chesapeake a little bit of everywhere a lot of them came to our particular neighborhood and our once decent somewhat quiet neighborhood became gangland overnight people banging on your door in the middle of the night you know you got junkies running around screaming hollering it was a real safety and security issue the last straw for us was when we were going to move anyway because we saw the writing on the walls like, okay, it's time to go. You got these, you know, wild animals from the project coming in here on drugs, all kind of stuff. We got to go. On the, like, third to last day right around then, we get a knock on our door middle of the night, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'm in a small apartment. And my mom get up. I get up, too. We go to the door. It's the police. They open the door further and we see my mom's car with another car embedded in the back of it what we think happened is some crackhead stole a car driving high whatever and crashed it into the back of my mom's car totaled it and just bounced so when you get that type of thing going on what else can you do but leave it's very simple Compton, California used to be a nice neighborhood from what I know and if I'm wrong let me know in the comments below at one point it was all white then you had black folks that came in from other parts of the country and also uh, like California to the neighborhood. Oh, it's just nice. There's no crime. There's that. And a the third. Then it became city of Compton with all the drugs, gangs and violence. See, I'm going to tell you one thing about black folks. If you don't know, a lot of times you have a nice upstanding black family and they'll move into a neighborhood that's predominantly white. But the problem is. They'll bring some of their cousins and friends of the family that ain't really doing all that well. They come into the neighborhood, start to break in the houses, stealing a little stuff here and there. Other black families come into the same thing. People coming from neighborhoods where they don't understand the value of property and not cutting the grass and not taking care of the outside facade of the house. And then the neighborhood just goes down, not only in value, but also in the social things that you have the the general fabric of the neighborhood goes down you know it, it, and then it becomes different that's how you have a good neighborhood go to a bad neighborhood and it's less about race and it's more about class because like i said i participated in black flight we had a 99 percent black neighborhood that was 
low income and kind of ghetto a little bit, but it wasn't that bad. That became gangland, just animal house overnight because of the class of people that came to a particular place. Uh, Michelle Obama, I'm not really sure why you're crying. Maybe you're in a particular place where this thing is uh, accepted to be crying about white flight, all this, that, and the third. And I got to add a couple more things here before I close on up. When white people come to a black neighborhood and they give the neighborhood the things that a lot of black folks want, jobs, opportunities, better schools, then that's bad because what's that called? Anybody know? That's called gentrification. That's also bad. So you can't win. If you're a white person, you leave a neighborhood when black folks come in, that's white flight. And why is that even bad? Like a lot of black folks wanna live amongst themselves. So if you go to a place where white folks are at and then they leave, isn't that good? And why can't you keep the neighborhood the same way it was when the white folks were there? Why do you need them to be there? Why can't you have the neighborhood be good on your own? Why must you go to their neighborhood? And Michelle Obama, you said in the beginning that, oh, my mother moved to a mostly white neighborhood for access to better schools. Is that the only reason why you moved? Or is it because you lived in a bad neighborhood, a mostly black ghetto neighborhood, and then you moved to a mostly white neighborhood that was good? So you moved for the same reasons why a white person or any other person would leave a neighborhood that is not good. As simple as that. Americans are not that much dissimilar. We just look at things sometimes differently. Michelle Obama and her mom wanted to move to a better place, uh, safer, better schools, uh, better property value, just better neighborhoods. This is the same reason why people leave neighborhoods that are becoming bad regardless of whether they're black, white, Puerto Rican, candy stripe. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. What say you? Do you think that Michelle Obama is a big time hypocrite? You want to leave a black neighborhood and go to a white neighborhood because better opportunities, better education, safer environment. But when a white person does it, that's somehow wrong. When white people move into a black neighborhood, that's also wrong because gentrification, they're bringing all the things that black folks want, right? All the, all the economics, everything but people that live in these areas are not prepared to receive it so then that's bad they want all the benefits of a productive society but they don't want to pay for it as simple as that am i wrong with my interpretation of what's happening here is michelle obama right that white people are just leaving because uh black folks you know that the hair is nappy and it frightens them i live in a neighborhood right now it's kind of like mixed and everybody's getting along, it's, it's no problems, okay? Nobody's like trying to leave because I came in. Like, nobody just decided to up and leave when I moved in. Like, it wasn't no big deal. We all get along. But if this neighborhood becomes bad, if you start getting shootings and killings and whatnot, I don't care who moves in. It could be space aliens from Mars. It could be unicorns from Jupiter. It does not matter. People are going to leave. That's how neighborhoods just kind of decline. When it becomes bad, when economics leave, that's what costs people to leave. People aren't so racist to just leave their home that they bought because a black person with an afro or something like that moved in. But whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.